Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear Docuware customers and Docuware partners. I welcome you to the first virtual Docuworld and user conference ever. Welcome to Docuworld 2020 or welcome to Digital Transformation and Docuware out of Gammering instead of Berlin. My name is Max Ertel and I am one of two presidents of Docuware responsible for sales and marketing. So, DocuWorld and user conference last year, oops, wrong direction. Um, when I see these pictures, today I can hardly believe that this was possible. And at the same time, I am overcome with melancholy and longing, and I'm already looking forward to the next years in Berlin, when we can hopefully meet again in person and talk to each other. Uh, as, as, as you can see, this year and this event is a bit different. Uh, and by the way, the last time my hair was as long, but not as gray as today was when I was 15 years old or 20 years ago, or maybe 21. Um, I guess, I guess you are uh, sitting uh, alone in front of your PC, your tablet or your smartphone with a headset or with your loudspeakers on. Uh, but I can tell you, you are not alone. Uh, we are very proud to say that currently in this keynote for the DocuWorld 2020, we have more than 1,300 participants out of more than 45 countries. So when I said in the beginning, good morning, so then that obviously was very true for some colleagues on customers who are listening to this in the United States, where it's three o'clock in the morning or depending on where you are even uh, earlier, where at the other side uh, in Australia, some of our customers and partners are uh, watching and listening to us and there it's already five o'clock in the evening and I know that they said okay let's let's order some pizza uh, while we are uh, listening to uh, Michael and Max so uh, enjoy your enjoy your pizza enjoy your dinner uh, and um, watch the videos so that's very great and we are proud to we could motivate so many people joining our webinar and being with us today so and that already leads me to my first question uh, as you may see uh, we are in the office but i have to tell you uh, there's only four people in the office today and as for the last four weeks everyone is working out of his home office but I would be very much interested, where are you today? Where are you right now? Are you in your office like normal, whatever normal means? Or are you in your home office and you can work as if you would be in the office with no drop in productivity? Or are you in your home office, but you are missing a lot of your tools and documents, whatever you need, whatever you have in the office? Or you say, yes, I'm in the home office, but I really cannot work because I don't have all tools and all processes I need, or maybe you are somewhere else, like at the beach. So please uh, tell me where you are. I'm, I'm very interested to, to see where you are. Okay, so far 30 people already uh, did vote. So let's wait some more seconds to get more information. So now we have already 60 percent so i guess 60 percent would give us a good overview so uh, please show us the results where where are our uh, attendees so surprising for me uh, 15 percent said that they are in the working that they are in the office like normal uh, a very good number which i would not have expected differently is that 64 percent of all attendees are saying they are in the home office, but they can work with no drop in productivity. 
12% say that they are in the home office, but they are missing the one or the other tool. 8% say they are in the home office, but they cannot really work because they are missing a lot. And 1% says they are somewhere else, maybe in an internet cafe or in on the beach or or wherever. So that was quite interesting. Uh, I would have uh, expected a little differently, but that's very nice to see. Now let's go on uh, with our, let's go on with my presentation. So as, as you can see, uh, the world is changing quickly. The world is changing overnight. And what we see today is um, that uh, people and companies experience a total new role. So they are learning how to find productivity in the home uh, office, in the home environment. And they are discovering currently which systems and processes don't work for a distributed workforce. And uh, from a document perspective, I can tell you that uh, when, when we do our virtual meetings, then suddenly there is a child uh, uh, in the meeting and is playing uh, in front of the PC. Uh, or what we also see is that uh, more of our uh, male colleagues are responsible for taking care of the children because uh, the women are not in the home office. They are working in so-called system-relevant uh, jobs so where they, they have to go uh, to the hospital or any other uh, location. And uh, uh, the men have to take over things which they did not do in the past. And uh, we also see that... Um, Sometimes, uh, we, as, as we have we've been perfectly uh, prepared for home office, but also for us, we had to change something. Before the corona crisis, uh, we had a home office policy that every colleague could work one day from at home. Now, currently, 100% uh, of our employees work five days from at home. So, and, and we had to find out that uh, we had three people who did not have a, a laptop, so they had to carry home the desktop, which was a little bit more effort than just to take uh, the laptop. We had to learn that talking to each other and, and is a little bit more difficult than just to uh, stay up and go to the next office. But overall for us, it's working uh, perfect. And what we also see, obviously, the, the longer the crisis takes, more and more companies are seeking to find cost efficiencies to derive the econo economic uncertainty. So, and, uh, but as DocuWare partners and DocuWare customers, uh, we already know and, and we're experiencing this now at this time, uh, uh, very nice is that paper is dead and remote workforces is, is a model that can work. And we know from many of our customers that uh, they work as before the crisis. We, for ourselves, we have all our IT applications in the cloud and we are thankful for this because we don't need any IT administrative people go to the office and take care of the infrastructure. And what we also see that the right digital transformation investment can yield in a huge ROI, which was proven out uh, overnight through the uh, crisis. And this uh, uh, justifies what we have said uh, over the last years that the crisis did prove now that this is that this is true. And as Docker partners and customers, you are ahead of the game. And for many of the questions other companies are currently searching to try to find answers, you are already set in the best way and you can work as uh, before the crisis. But when we look uh, at, we are, at DocuWare, we are still learning. Uh, as I said, uh, we have to adjust a little bit our culture um, uh, as the distributed office is now 100% of our daily life. We have to work on our relationships because the conversations work now differently from uh, over, over go to meeting and Teams. And also we had to adjust a little bit on the infrastructure because even with all the preparation we did, we did, we had to invest 
uh, as I said, uh, we are going to replace the four desktop PCs with uh, mobile PCs. So what will we see as a result of the crisis in the future? Some, some predictions, the work from home policies, uh, they will change. So either you already have a work from home policy or you will have one. And obviously all uh, employees will now say, okay, as we work five days from at home now for weeks, why should we not also work some days from at home uh, when the crisis hopefully is over? Uh, also the whole um, disaster recovery, succession planning, contingency planning is now a hot topic and everyone understands why it is important. It's like with your health, if you have it, no one cares, but if you don't have it, then suddenly you find out it's good to uh, prepare for it. Paper now is viewed in many companies as a business risk. Workflows become more digital and more structured. And what we also see, which is a very good thing, is companies will consider their social responsibility and they think much more about what they can do for, 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 for their uh, employees, but also for, for their, their neighbors and, and for other people living in the same area. So that's, that's a good thing, what we, which we see at the crisis. Uh, and uh, what's also interesting, all the things which now happened overnight, we, we had a, a lot of uh, uh, consultants who said, guys, you have to change your companies because the new generation, the next generation of workers, they will expect that this will, ha will, will happen. So the remote from uh, work is normal and not the exception. Uh, and uh, experience with products is more important than features and sensitivity secu security is there. And uh, the most uh, managers of companies said, yeah, yeah we know and, and, and we, will, we will manage this transformation. And then in 10 years, we will be there. And suddenly we are there overnight. So that's interesting to see. Uh, and, and I guess very much appreciated by the younger generation like my two children because they could not understand why we are not doing this anyway. So I would like to change the slide, but I can't. Okay, now I can. Uh, and obviously we also see trends uh, which are already there. So uh, cloud adoption will increase even faster. The power of, of the big supplier like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Oracle will grow. More digital processes will create more digital data. Uh, and uh, security, security, security is important, which means that DocuWare also have to be very much aware of this and, and, and must be very transparent with what we are doing with the data. But uh, that was always one of our uh, highest priorities. So, and we will continue uh, on doing this. And now I already have my second survey. So that would be also very interesting for us. Where do you see your company today? Are you saying we are already almost fully in the cloud with data and software? Are you saying we are planning additional investments right now? Are you saying we are considering investments only after the crisis is over? Are you saying we are thinking about investing but not within the next 12 months? Or you say no plans to invest in cloud data and storage or cloud applications. Okay, so let's see where we are with our survey. So um, this is very this is very surprising and very interesting for me. Uh, Fifty five percent of all attendees are saying that um, they are currently investing in the cloud. So uh, that's interesting. 22% are saying we are planning additional investments in the cloud. 8% uh, are saying we are considering in investment in the cloud, but only after the crisis. 5% are saying we are thinking about investing, but not within the next 12 months. And 10% are saying we have no plans to invest in the cloud. So I guess that's, that's interesting. and. Um, did change uh, a lot uh, because before the survey, I guess it was not like that 55% would say they are investing in the cloud. 
So now let's go on with my presentation, please. Leo, can you yeah. give me the presentation back, please? So, uh, and obviously that's all very interesting. And the question, and the question for us is, uh, when we have all these predictions and we foresee all these changes in the very short term, then I guess many of you are asking you the question, and where does DocuWare fit into this new world? Uh, and it's my pleasure now to hand over uh, to Dr. Michael Berger, who is the second president of DocuWare, and he is responsible for everything else beside sales and marketing. Uh, uh, and I have to apologize for Michael, he just has to do some uh, bio, bio breaks, uh, but he will be there in a minute. Okay, thanks and see you. Also welcome from my side um, uh, to the Docker World 2020, dear customers, dear partners. My name is Michael Berger, so Max introduced me already. And uh, I'm president for product uh, services and finance of Dockerware. And uh, I welcome you also to this uh, Docker World from our little studio here in Gamering. And thank you for joining. Thank you for spending all your valuable time with us. Um, yeah, so I would like uh, to continue from where Max ended with the surveys and uh, uh, yeah. The introduction where the trends are. So the question is, where does Dockerware fit into this future? And seeing all these trends, digitalization of paper, structured processes, process automation, mobile work, um, also security, compliance topics, even more efficient work um, around and all out of this, all out of the cloud. So in the additional pressure now we have with the current crisis. So I think you know the answer, so Dockerware perfect, perfectly fits to this world, and I also will um, tell you why. So basically, these requirements we are driving since years, as you know, and we developed four major um, strategies around them. And I would like to explain a little bit more about these four strategic topics points which were fully committed, we were in the past and we are also in the future. So first of all, um, it's our stable, reliable, secure and performant public cloud ECM platform that meets the requirements of, I would say, the toughest environments. The second um, is our effective solutions. That means more on the capability points of view um, that we meet your business demands, your requirements, your key use cases of digitization, automation, and also um, document-driven workflows. The third major uh, strategic focus points is customer centricity. So customer centricity um, means we would like to have a high level of interaction with you, a high level and of um, uh, exciting service exciting uh, also product and ensure that the product seamlessly fits into your daily tasks and supports you the best way. And the fourth strategic point is our um, partner network. And uh, this is important for us because the partners are really supporting you as the customer's best and also extend our uh, customer community. Now we will have a short look uh, on some developments uh, in the next year and even beyond. First of all, let me start with the first strategy, um, our public cloud ECM service. So here um, we see um, basically that we have soon about 5,000 customers in the cloud and we know that the updates are key for us, for you. And we would like to work on simplifying these updates and smoothing uh, and smoothing them. That means on the one hand side, we would like to do less risky updates, ensure backward compatibility, and also optimize the rollout procedure. On the other hand, 
uh, we would like to continuously work on the high availability of the cloud platform. That means also uh, in our uh, uh, respect, then this is about faster maintenance. It's all about uh, optimal monitoring and also reducing and uh, the fixing time in case there are really some failures. The third point is the time to market. On the one hand side, so one aspect is that we would like to be able to react pretty quickly to market demands. Therefore, we need to shorten our overall development cycle towards, towards fast availability of new developments we would like to bring to the market. And the other thing is the second aspect um, is our rollout flexibility. We would like to roll out new developments we have done um, when we think it's the right time. That means maybe if it's ready also to a single customer or to a, a couple of customers instead of all customers. On the other hand, we also might not wait until all the uh, uh, features or the developments are ready and we can ship single things. So this will be helping us also to test some few things on the market and also give a good feedback to the product. How do we do this? Um, this is a longer uh, journey from our side, and there may be, I would like to listen uh, to, to show you here two key uh, things, which are both processes and organizational changes. The first we call continuous delivery. So one in, on the one hand side, this is um, a more modular development. That means you have um, specifically uh, modularized uh, product that you can ship vertical things that you also have organized your teams in the same way that they are able to work independently of other teams and then you can roll out uh, things independent of the others. Then we have to automate the whole rollout and of course also increase for this the level of test automation. In addition to this, uh, we call this then the DevOps transformation is not only the continuous delivery, what I showed now, but it's also getting feedback all the time, improve the monitoring and reacting really fast in case of, of something uh, happens. So these are the measures behind, maybe a little bit more technical, but uh, just to give you an explanation of what is behind. And also just to say this, um, um, this enables us also to really deliver um, in much shorter release cycles like in months, like in weeks, and also fixing things in hours. So it's a key for our development. Uh, further development of our ECM platform, just to mention some few points, uh, for instance, also more data centers. So data centers, uh, where we currently maybe not uh, meet the demands and special requirements, specifically also for latency, because we have more regions in the world and the latency is getting higher. Um, then we also ensure higher security. Um, we increase performance due to optimizations for key operations, I would say. All these like storing, retrieving, search, view, annotation, workflows. We optimize the costs um, under increasing load and also in our operations. This is basically to still continuously offer you attractive pricing of the cloud. We also, also invest in optimized messaging and target communication. So we've done already some few things in the past, but there are still some few things I think we can improve. And uh, the last point is we stay hybrid. So that means we release the, or we update the cloud and maybe in shorter cycles, but we still have on-premise and we will still continuously ship on-premise and maybe on a on a longer term basis, on a half year basis, or maybe longer terms. Um, on the second major strategic uh, uh, pillars, we were saying these are effective solutions. So effective solution means from us product capabilities. We concentrate on providing capabilities um, to support your most important use cases that you really enable. Uh, that you're able to build your key processes with us. So basically, um, we've done already many things in 19. Just to summarize this, a more detailed view you get also um, in the 7.3 product demo later on. But just to say, we added table fields, we worked on single sign on, we added digital, digital signatures, we worked on intelligent indexing on premise electronic invoice formats, 
So some update for Germany, uh, Italy and France in addition, and also we added new languages. And in the future, so roughly some topics which are listed here, we would like to concentrate on also to add new languages because we are broadening the, the richness uh, of, uh, of Dockerware in, in the landscape. So specifically EMEA and APEC. We would like to have a better integration capabilities. We work on a new workflow designer just to make it much more easy and nicer. The intelligent, we work on intelligent indexing enhancements, mobile development, and also uh, some additions as always on the viewer forms and smart connect. And uh, on the other hand, also I would count pre-configured solutions uh, to the effective part, to the product part. And uh, for you understanding pre-configured solutions are use cases for core processes on, on our customer space, uh, which we have seen in over 30 years now in our history, in which we try to bundle in our um, best practice configurations, which are now ready to use as a start. So we provide, as you can see here, invoice processing for Germany and US. We provide employee management for Germany and US and also municipalities. In the future, we would like to scale into new countries with these solutions. And uh, yeah, for them, for this, uh, let's say scaling, we need country specific adaptations. And we did it first now for France, which is pretty new. Um, with providing these pre-configured solutions, we are fulfilling more or less um, two goals. The first goal is to reduce our sales cycle to be as fast as two weeks and enable sales over the phone. So really enable sales to be faster, quicker and in a broader scale. The second is that we um, reduce the implementation time drastically. So in a value that we can say that uh, a new customer could be up in two to five days instead of what we have currently more on the, the average five, 10 days, maybe more. We have seen already positive effects here from our overall 200 uh, solutions, which we sold last year in 2019 and the 400 we have since we even started this. So these are already showing us uh, very good um, results and we are really optimistic that we would like to reach this, uh, that we reach this goal. Soon, we would also enable our partners using these underlaying mechanisms in order to also reduce the effort when multiplying solutions for their customers, yeah, for your customers in the installation part update. And we will uh, provide the possibility to install more than one pre-configured pre solution in one organization. So this... Um, are some ideas we are working on. I just showed them and I would like um, to know a little bit more from your side because there are more ideas out there and they would like to get some feedback from you uh, on some directions. Um, and I listed just five of them and you can have uh, multiple choice. You can have seen many, but I would like to see maybe later on some prioritization. So first of all, these are structured archiving. We should still invest more in compliance standards, retention management, and by structured archiving, I mean also what we call in German Akte. Second is more artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, AI in the process automation. Third, uh, new, more process analytics and dashboards to see where your workflows are, where your things working and running in the, in the uh, office and the fourth point additional pre-configured solutions in addition to what we have now for specific business processes and the fifth point uh, additional native um, integrations like connectors like we we have already so we wait a little bit more for your answers um i give you some more time and i'm really curious to see what we will have um as a feedback. Just a little bit more. We had 50%, now we are even more, and uh, now we see the results. So the winner is artificial intelligence and process automation with 58%. 
Then we have process analytics and dashboards with 52% and uh, to around 30% are structured archiving, the first point and additional pre-configured solutions, the fourth point and um, something in between are additional native integrations. Okay, so this gives us at least uh, three kind of bucket uh, feedback. Thank you very much for this. We will not do not deliver it tomorrow, but we will keep it uh, in, into consideration for what we will develop. And this brings me also um, to the next point immediately, because feedback and interaction is important. Uh, because the third, as you remember, the third strategic point is customer centricity. And uh, in order to make that a little bit more understandable, I introduce what we so what we call the customer journey. The customer journey are interaction points between you as a customer and also partners with us. So maybe here's the, the customer journey. So on the first point, you have prospects, uh, you have perception phase, acquisition phase from our perspective. Then somehow a, con a customer signs the contract as an early customer has some experience with the onboarding, early success. And then maybe after a year, we could really consider it's an existing customer. Uh, and the, the topics are really supporting expansion and so on. So there are different lifetimes uh, of you in the journey with us. And there are some touch points. Um, touch points may be marketing material, websites, social media, the trial, the product itself, training materials, user conferences, exhibitions, any contact you might have over phone, over email with us, and even the system updates are. Uh, points and for sure there are positive and negative aspects and we would like of course to do all of them uh, in the positive area. So development over time you can also see that for you this changes for the customer's perspective also for the partner because you see different requirements over time, you see a different role of yourself uh, depending also on the product usage or the system user and the experience you gain. And uh, for us um, this is the, uh, the goal, the ultimate goal is to really optimize the customer journeys to make them really exciting and uh, define all the, the touch points we have and also optimizing them towards this, this goal. Here are just uh, some few things on the roadmap. Also in the previous years, we worked on this already, um, but, here, um, on, on, but here are just four, four major pillars for the, for the future. For support, I start bottom up. So for support, I would like to keep the high and very good quality and the SLAs, but scale uh, by customer amount, because there are more customers, but also by country and language, and also by hours. So currently we have a, a 9.5 model, so nine hours, five days a week, for level two support in all languages. We would like to provide a 24-5 support, so 24 hours, five for level one support in English and maybe in German in the future, and going up towards 24-7 uh, in yeah, basically German and English in the midterm. Mid so this is important for us to really cover on a, on a worldwide scale, uh, all our customers and, and you from the uh, partner side. Then uh, the second point is the partner training and user enabling. We would like to offer more web-based trainings, renew our partner portal, and introduce a new LMS, so learning management system, provide more self-help self resources, so enablers for you, like the new e-learnings. We would like to also extend the knowledge base, and we would like to rework also the help system. On the third pillar, the smooth experience um, for you as customers or for the new customers on the onboarding phase, we are improving our trials. We optimize uh, lots of processes behind, um, specifically also for the direct customers and work uh, on a data warehouse to collect and analyze all the data we get continuously in the live action for optimizing our customer journeys. And also in this, this bucket uh, customer journey, um, I would like to put the uh, solution part um, that we would like 
really to continue to ease in, on, on the use and configuration of the uh, solutions and make them really highly intuitive. So this is <clears throat> something that we invest in several methodologies um, to reach this. On the fourth um, uh, strategic uh, part, uh, I would like to say that we are committed to our partner channel. The partner channel is our sales channel. And as I said already beginning, you are very close to the customers and you are understand the needs and can help them uh, best. Of course, in then with having us in the background, but, but you are the key persons towards our customers. And the partners uh, will also, and you will also adapt to the new situation for sure, like we have uh, <clears throat> to do, increase the know-how of the cloud, security, remote workforce. We have um, also more and more partners selling cloud, and there are more even selling cloud only. More partners selling pre-configured solution. It is meant really to make the life easier and uh, the more customers we will migrate from on-premise to cloud so this will be also a challenge in the future and something to work on so for us um, <clears throat> we really stay committed to you as the partner channel that's uh, so far a little strategic outlook but now i would also go back a little bit to the 2019 results and just point out some highlights which we have seen um, Specifically, um, we gained 1,895 new customers from more than 50 countries last year. So this is a record number. And this is a great number, which really shows our power in the, in the sales area and our uh, product and services. We gained 668 in Americas, and we have uh, 1,227 customers in EMEA <clears throat> in addition and I just can thank you all. So for sure, there are uh, lots of you contributing to this. And uh, yeah, just say continue. And uh, that we hope to, to see even uh, uh, numbers like this in the next years. Just on the other side, seeing the growth on the cloud. So what does it mean from the system support? So we have... Uh, <clears throat> now around 3,000 customers end of 2019. And in 2019, this was a 48% growth of customers. On the user side, which were which are registered on the, on the cloud and which are finally using the system, it even was a 61% growth, which means even more and bigger customers are using cloud. And the usage from a document perspective was 68% uh, more than 2018. So the document growth was even higher. <clears throat> Just for the users, we have about uh, 150,000 users currently on the system, which is a uh, 50 user per average per, uh, per customer. And on the right side, what you see also the access uh, happened from 129 different countries around the world in 30 days. So this means if you, yeah, if you see that there are 194 countries in the world, we are already in two thirds of the countries accessed um, from people which are traveling there or where you have subsidiaries. Because, but as you remember, we sold in 50 countries, but there are more that even access our data services. But I also wanted to show you some numbers because um, this did not continue, this, uh, this growth, because we have uh, the corona crisis and we also could see this in our Docker Web Cloud last month. So all the previous numbers were before for 2019 and here specifically, we looked um, after March 11th and uh, overall we could see 10% uh, fewer active companies. So that means 90% of the companies were still working with us, even after uh, this uh, dramatic drop in the uh, break-in of Corona. Then 50%, 15% fewer active people. That means the companies which were still working worked with a little bit less people. And we have 20% fewer operations. That means um, overall, even these companies were then doing a little bit less. But this is clear if you see the economy and the parameters around. 
but we see already an upward trend, which is pretty nice. So specifically, uh, Italy and Spain have a clear upward trend already. So they reached the bottom and going up. UK reached the bottom, and uh, Germany and yes uh, are somehow they did not drop that much and are kind of stable in a, in a level. So there's really positive things here, and I think we will soon see more activities again. In addition, um, besides um, base functionalities, which we provide base capabilities, we also added major, major components in the last years, like forms, workflow, intelligent indexing, mobile, and we track the usage in the cloud. So we see growing usage of these components and um, reflecting, I would say, the importance of these mobile um, modules for you as uh, customers. So here you see some samples out of the cloud. There are 30%, 33% using the mobile client, 33% using the workflow, 39% using the workflow, 41% use forms, and 61 use an Outlook integration. So we see already a very good number of coverage, but there's still also some potential, I would say. In addition, some numbers for intelligent indexing. So these are also great numbers here. 850,000 documents were processed uh, per week. These are 4 million corrected, extracted, correctly extracted index values per week. And 93% of the document extractions were completed within um, two seconds. And overall, this means there are more than 5,000 hours of working per week, which we saved, which would have been manually indexing. In addition, just one point I would like to mention. So we were discussing and fighting with the US authorities for some years. And finally, in 2019, we also got a patent for the base technology of uh, intelligent indexing, which really shows our innovation in lead in technology. So I'm coming already towards the end of the keynote, um, and I would like to give you some more general statements. So Dockerware as a company has seen growth and stability for over 32 years now. For 2020, we at least have an optimism for a OK year from sales perspective, as you all know, but we see great future ahead. So you might ask why? Yeah, we have seen many crises already, like uh, even you could tell German reunification and what happened afterwards on the economy. Then year 2000 um, in September 11th, we would really call um, as crisis. Then we had world financial crisis. And we also had uh, other challenges, like for instance, a Westbrook acquisition, which also put some effort on our side, we have the cloud transition, which is a, a challenge, and we have last year the founders transition, and we all, I must say, uh, managed all these crises or challenges, bigger challenges, pretty well. And this uh, gives me really uh, a good hope and, and makes us confident to also manage the corona crisis well. In addition, I must say, we have a great team, we have great people together with all of you, we have a great product, great service, which we are developing further. We have a strong sales channel and now also the Rico support. And the market opportunity, we must say, is still 60% open for us. So we cannot reach this alone. And I really have to thank you all together, specifically you, our customers, for investing in us, in us and trusting us for your most important business processes and also the information we store, to our car partners for continuing to believe in us, in Dockerware, the company, the product, our people. And specifically also I would like to thank to our employees for their great growth last year and helping every partner, customer and each other in this crisis. Also for setting up this Docker world environment and making this happen even under these circumstances. And I only uh, can say uh, from 
Max and myself, uh, thank you very much, all of you, for your attention, for joining us here. We wish you a great Docker World 2020 in this format, first time. And we hope to see you really uh, next year again in 2021 in person. All the best and most importantly, stay healthy. Thank <laughs> you.